Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new Let's Play on this channel. I'm the Ninja Stalker, and this is Medal of Honor Underground. I've never played this game before, but I've played the first one, so it shouldn't be too far off. I'll go ahead and just let this roll on by. The First World War. Victory had been ours, but we would soon fail at the peace that followed. Our leaders appeased the growing evil instead of fighting it, sacrificing our future. We vainly reinforced our borders with concrete while we evacuated our children from the cities. There was something terrible brewing with our old enemy, and no one seemed able to stop it. The world was about to find out what happens when an entire nation is swept by madness. What would you do? Surrender? Collaborate? Or resist? May 10th, 1940. Alright, um, so I decided to play this, I wanted to do this because uh, an, individual, an individual commented on one of my videos like, hey, how's it going, and this and that, and I was like, yeah, it's doing doing great, doing great, still got some stuff going on with the military, so I'm not pouring out so many videos, but uh, I'm also taking a l not, I'm not going to say a little break from video recording, it's just, I don't know, I'm just sort of taking a break, I guess. Um, but the reason why I want to do a game like this is because I absolutely love military war games. A travel guide for lovers. Travel guide for lovers. Visit the inspiring Eiffel Tower. Secret Notre Dame Cathedral. Quaint villages. Intimate cafes. <laughs> Romantic surroundings. It's a graveyard. How's that romantic? And the utmost hospitality Europe has to offer. Electronics and DreamWorks Interactive presents Medal of Honor. Okay, so there's that. Now, again, as I mentioned, I love doing military war games, especially if it has something to do with uh, history. World War II, World... Well, maybe not so much World War One, but uh, World War II, any military history for that matter, I absolutely love. Now, going off of uh, military history for World War II... I believe it is widely believed and accepted that World War II started in 1939 with the invasion of Poland by uh, Nazi Germany. You could go further than that and say it started in 1937 with the invasion of the Empire Japan on the Republic of China. Um, well, maybe not so much as an invasion, but they have been sending troops from Japan over to uh, China, and then that's when you get the uh, that's when you get Manchuria involved in that, where Japan was taking over that. Uh, as a matter of fact, hold up, I had it up just to show. Go here. Let's do that. This. So yeah, here we are right here. The Empire of uh, Japan aimed to dominate Asia and the Pacific and was already at war with the Republic of China in 1937. But World Wars generally is said to begun in the, uh, September 1st, 1939, with the invasion of Poland by Germany and subsequent declarations of war on Germany by France and the United Kingdom. It's because of what happened in World War One. Germany was said to have uh, 
been uh, been set to have paid certain things, uh, certain payments based off of the war because uh, because they lost and because of uh, the cost of war in other countries. So they were said, hey, you're gonna have to pay this, and they just kept asking for well, not really asking, but forcing more money out of Germany. And when you have a a group of people that is just set out to say, hey, we're now supposed to be paying so many other countries and we're going through problems ourselves, how do they expect us to do this? They're going to tend to listen to a few fanatics, groups of people that says, hey, this isn't us, this is not what we're supposed to do. And so what? So there happens with uh, Germany and uh, Hitler. Um, Germany and the Soviet Union partition and annex territories of their European neighbors, Poland, Finland, Romania, and the Baltic states. At one point, Russia, the Soviet Union, I should say, uh, was partnered up with Germany, but Germany ended up going behind Soviet Union's back at some point. If it was any constellation, they should have known that if Germany was doing their plan to try and take as much land as possible, they would also try and take as much land from the Soviet Union as well. The problem with Germany during World War II, they were fighting two fronts, East and West Front, which you don't ever want to do. But they went and did it. Now the good thing that worked out, well maybe not so much the good thing, but the thing that worked out for Germany was their Blitzkrieg uh, campaigns. Which is almost like the Schlieffen plan that they had for World War I, except they changed a few things here and there and they renamed it. And it works. They actually swept across uh, the map of Europe where they go, where they came across uh, up to Germany past uh, whatever was uh, above above, uh, what's it, France, they went across that way and then straight down into France. The thing that France did for World War II, they assumed it was going to be like another World War I, so they started building so many defensive bunkers, so many defensive areas, things that would help out for trench warfare. They didn't anticipate or think that if there was another World War, anything would have changed. With the impl implementation of tanks and uh, fast attacks like the Blitzkrieg, it immensely helped out Germany. So they were able to get around France and their defensive bunkers and their uh, that, the Siegfried line, basically. Uh, let's see. Prevent Future World League of Nations was created during the 1919 Paris Peace Conference. The organization's primary uh, goals were to prevent armed conflict through collective security, military and naval disarmament, and setting international disputes through peaceful negotiations. Now, I think with the uh, the UN League of Nations, I cannot recall, but I don't believe the U.S. was in on that. The U.S. came up with the idea, but they decided not to be in on it. They, I think it was something about that they wanted the world powers, more of them, since it was mostly in Europe, to be a part of it, rather than having the U.S. to be in on it, since they're, since we were on the other side of the, or since they were on the other side of the world there. Um... German Empire was dissolved, a German Revolution in 1918 and 1919. Yeah. Asia, Kuomintang, KMT Party in China. Yeah, so China was split into uh, a number of groups. And what we have now today is you have China and then you have uh, Taiwan, which I think Taiwan was originally in... Uh, in China, but because certain groups were pushing each other out, you had the KMT. I think there was a there was a KCT. There was a bunch of stuff. Shanghai, Chiang Kai Shek, and a bunch of other groups. There's Manchukuo puppet state. Yeah, from uh, the invasion, launch invasion of Manchuria, and established the puppet state of Manchukuo, which uh, Japan was able to do. Yeah, an increasing militaristic Japanese empire, which had long sought influence in China. Yep, and that's when they came in. For the Mukon, uh, Muk, what's it, Mukden incident, it's a pretext launch invasion of Manchuria. A lot of bad things were going on at that time. A lot of killings. They were too weak to resist. Yeah, they appealed to the League of Nations for help. Japan withdrew from uh, the League of Nations because they were like, "Hey, uh, what are you doing over there?" And they're like, "Oh, I can't believe you were saying this about us." And they were like, "Fuck it, we'll just get out." Well, maybe not. It might not even be so much as that, but, you know, they were caught, and they were like, whatever. They got out of that. 
So then you have pre-war events. This is what I consider because it says 1939 is a start. I like to think of events that lead up to World War II. So pre-war events, much like what happened here uh, with uh, Asia, mid 1920s. Moving on up, then you have the 30s, an Italian invasion of Ethiopia, Spanish Civil War, which didn't help out uh, in Spain. You had two groups, and then one group was being helped by uh, like uh, Italy and Germany, and it was good testing grounds for them to test out their tanks and stuff, whereas the other group in uh, Spain pretty much got lucked out. Japanese invasion of China, 1937. Let's see, capturing the capital of Nanking in December 1937. Yeah, tens of thousands of Chinese were civilians, disarmed combatants were murdered by the Japanese. Yeah, yeah the Marco Polo uh, incident. Soviet-Japanese border conflicts. Because uh, Soviets didn't like how anybody was coming close to their territory. That's a problem right there, so you would have trouble with them. Europeans, course of war, 1930-40, and then you get uh, Western Europe, 1940-41, is where the U.S. gets involved, sending troops a little bit here and there, especially over in Africa and stuff, and then 1941 is when you have uh, the, uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. So, yeah. Anyways... Yeah, war breaks out in the Pacific. No, excuse me, Pacific in the 1941. Russia is a set up here. Axis tax the U.S. on Russia in 1941. So yeah, there's that. Get back into it. All right. Let's check the options. Controller. Player one. I don't know if Configuration 2 is what I had in the original game. Oh, I meant to change that. I think it might be this one. Configuration 5. Game. Bonsoir Manon. Here I'm sorry to call you over on such short notice, but we have an important new mission. Remember that Danish boy who lives below me? You know, Niels, the one who keeps asking me about the resistance. He's always saying that he wants to join because his home country is occupied just like France. I didn't think he was serious, but tonight he's brought me a tip that we should definitely take advantage of. Remember how the Nazis took over the Paris Academy of Music and started using it as a makeshift armory? Neil said that they're transferring a whole truckload of ordnance later tonight from there to the Gestapo field office in Dubuisson. He stole a copy of the manifest and showed it to me. The truck will be carrying crates of ammunition, explosives, small arms, and even a few heavy machine guns. Just the kind of supplies we need to restock our weapons cache. I will need you to be my lookout tonight while I hijack the truck. It should be fairly simple since the Germans won't be expecting us. When this is all over, we may have a new member for our little resistance team. As always, if we get separated, head for the catacombs and meet up with the people there. Tell them you're my sister and they will help you. It's getting late. We'd better move out. Alright, so we saw a picture of what our character looks like. Uh, Manon, she's very beautiful. And we get to play as her. That's the difference in this game from the other game. We have a female character. So... Midnight Rendezvous, 1st of May, 1942, page 1. Manon, ma petite, thank you for deciding to help us on our midnight raid. The ever-increasing Nazi presence in the city has made it more and more difficult for the resistance to get its hands on much-needed supplies. Acquiring this truck full of ammunition and explosives will no doubt strengthen our cause. 
Thanks to the Vichy regime, Patin's French police thugs, the Malice will be out in force. I'm giving you a pistol and a few petrol bombs. Please be careful, sister. I'll meet you beneath the Eiffel Tower, and from there, it's just a short path from the park to the academy, where the supply trucks should be waiting. I should be able to get into the building, but I'll need you to provide cover file while I'm working on the locks. Once we get to the truck, you open the garage door and we'll drive into the countryside. If anything should go wrong, head for the underground catacombs. We'll find friends there who will keep you safe. Alright. And there's uh, Menon posing. Also, uh, this game is the European version of Medal of Honor. I don't know if there's a big difference between uh, between the the version that, that's sold in the U.S. and the European version, but it's not going to bother me any. I'm not going to bitch about it. Scenes, pistol rounds, I think 50 should be the max. Have a drink on me! Alright. Get the kneecaps. Pistol rounds out of the rifles. Must use the same ammunition. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a Walter P38. I don't know what rifles they're using, but if it has Walter P38 rounds, then okay. And here's uh, the bottom half of the Eiffel Tower. There's our brother. Manon, you came. There isn't much time. Follow me and watch your back. Militia are everywhere. Why do you run like that? Why don't you run normally? Try to keep up. should still be the same system as the original Medal of Honor, where it's a three-star system for excellent gunnery evaluation or whatever. Yeah, 50 is the max because I just walked over the ammunition and I didn't get anything. Try to keep up! My brother took a couple of shots, but he's good. They're very generous with the uh, health ammunitions in this game, or the health replenishments in this game, because I saw a whole bunch of them along the way.
first time that happened. I never knew that they can actually grab it. Like, well, actually, that shouldn't be the first time it happened because they can grab hand grenades too. So that's understandable. If you throw a hand grenade, they can go and grab it. But I didn't think they can grab it at like mid air. But considering that they're petrol bombs and they pretty much blow up on contact, it's pretty clever that they were able to grab it in mid air. So that's the first time I've ever noticed something like that. Because I assumed it would have been the same thing as uh, the original Medal of Honor. Or if you threw it, it'd have to be on the ground and then they can catch it. But again, like I said, the, the petrol bombs, they blow up on contact. So I guess there had to have been some way that they were able to uh, to grab it before it was able to be uh, ex you know explode on the ground based on contact. So that's unique. There isn't much time. Follow me and watch your back. Militia are everywhere. I do like the sound that they use to try and make like he's pick pick locking it. Or lock, or excuse me, lock picking it. Alright, you guys, come on. bombs from that machine gun. It doesn't make much sense, but whatever. Uh, so, apparently we lost our brother. He ran the truck into a wall. I don't know why. He could have just had his head out the window shooting his machine guns and getting rid of these guys considering his damage output. Or he could have just waited back there while I shot these guys, but, I mean, whatever. So, we have to now go into the catacombs. Honor for the Fallen. There's Manon sporting a pistol, which kind of looks like not the gun that we had. Excellent three star rating, two objectives out of two, 47, 
36, Walter P38, okay, 76% accuracy. Uh, we are a gunner evaluation decongestor, decongestor, whatever that is. Go ahead and save. I'll just go with my cat's name. Now you'll see that uh, in slot one, I already have a a block named Leo. That's because I came into this game testing uh, to see if it'll actually work. So there it is. We'll go ahead and try at it. It says 11%, I don't know why it says that, because all I really did was just check things out. It's kind of odd. Anyways, let's... I can either stop the video and make it a short video to watch, or I can make a longer video. Until we have to actually start the next mission. Uh, you know what? I'll make it a longer video. Amongst the Dead, page 1, 1st of May, 1942. If you're reading this, your attempt to steal munitions did not go as planned. Jacques. Okay, so I guess that's her brother's name, Jacques, or something. Uh, was always rather impetuous and inclined to trust, and now it seems that Gustavo are honest. Our group, Combat, has been using the catacombs to move personnel and supplies, and now we soldiers of the night must evacuate. Fortunately, we have planned for our eventual discovery. With this note, you will find several detonators and Sten submachine gun. The Sten ammo should be compatible with the MP3008 weapons that the Germans will be using. I thought they used MP40s. I guess it's a variety. I don't know. The Gestapo and Vichy Milice brutes have been coming through crawl spaces and connect to the streets above. Each entrance is above the main level of the catacombs and moonlight will be visible through them. We have explosives placed and ready to be ready to do the work. Detonate them by pressing the action button. Okay, yeah. We also need you to secure some forged papers hidden behind a crawl space marked by the resistance symbol. Excuse me. And then sneak through the sarcophagus room to find an exit leading to the mortuary, where an ex collaborator awaits burial outside Paris. Take his place in the hearse. And one of our agents will get you to Santa Marie des Champs, where you should be safe until the heat dies down. I don't know if I said that correctly. Des Champs, des Champs, des Champs. My problem, being Spanish, whenever I see certain words or names, I'll make it sound, you know, like in my language. So Santa Maria des, des Champs or something, I don't know. Anyways. Fight continues. There's my own shooting now. And some some tank commander on a Panzer. Panzer, some type. I don't know what Panzer that one is. Maybe like a Panzer 3 4. Sten machine gun. Hey, there we are. Use different ammunition from the P 38. So. Let's get rid of this guy. What are you looking at? I do miss the MP40 from the original uh, Medal of Honor. I don't know if we have ever get in this game. Because I do like the slow fire rate. So that's probably Gestapo, and the other guy was uh, Vichy Melis or something. You 
know smoking's bad for you. So I'm guessing this is the catacombs underneath Paris, which is kind of creepy. I don't know why there would be such such places like this, you know, because it's kind of creepy. It's cool, I like that, you know, it's that's a place I would visit, but you got to be careful with that because I hear people go and visit and sometimes you don't ever see them again because they lose their way. Some people go in with like ropes, but some of the ropes aren't long enough and they want to continue searching and next thing you know they're lost and then you find new bodies and places, you know, the catacombs claim another victim and all that. It's creepy, you got these skulls everywhere, which I think they do have underneath Paris. It's unique and it's got like history and I'm, I'm wondering why so many skulls are underneath Paris like that. Like I don't disapprove of it, that's not what I'm trying to point out. But it's unique and creepy. In a good way. You gotta imagine uh, in a place with so much uh, buried and dead, there's gotta be some some creepy ghostly apparitions and stuff happening. If you believe in that stuff. Up. There we go. Okay, so this is where we need to be, I guess. Papers found. Alright. It's the Stian machine gun.
how are you still alive? There we go. I was like, that blast radius should have gotten you. And that's where they come down. Where they drop in at. Into the uh, catacombs. An on posing triumphantly over a panzer tank. Or a panther tank, I don't know which one it is. Amongst the dead, excellent rating, three stars, two a two. Sten gun mark two, fifty three percent accuracy. Well, what do you expect with a machine gun? Gunnery evaluation, disarmor. It's because we have a lot of shots in the arms, huh? Alright. Go ahead and save. There, see, now it says 3%. Okay, so I guess it's fixed now. Alright. So, there's that. I'll go ahead and stop the video here. Uh, and apparently, SCP Toolkit information, because the remote was moved, but it's fixed now. We'll stop the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed, but I'm going to get right back into it. And I might do some other videos that I have not played in a while. Uh, thinking Dungeon Keeper and Bushido Blade. But I'm probably going to do a lot more of this. Because this is a game that I think I could finish in like a, a few days, a few weeks. Depends how my schedule is. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. You guys take care. You guys are great as always. Have yourselves a great day.